So five questions to ask before listing your home for sale. Um, as you know, SandovalRealEstateGuide.com is our local site here. We have several others. I'll remind you about that near the end of our presentation today. Um, we decided to attack five questions to ask your listing agent for this um, beginning series. Number one, how are you qualified to sell my home? So, I mean, even before we get into the questions, the, um, you know, the reason why we think this is an important thing for everyone to understand is because I, I'm sure we've all heard that in most businesses, 80% uh, of the business is done by 20% of the people in the business. But in real estate, it's even more extreme. Um, some of the statistics I've seen from uh, various news media is saying that it's 94% of real estate business is uh, transacted by 6% of the realtors. So it's a very heavily skewed business where you have a lot of people uh, that are semi-professional um, and then you have a, just a small handful of people that are really professional. And um, part of that's because, unfortunately, to become a realtor, it's actually very easy. Um, the, the, you have to sit in, it depends on the state, but in Florida, it's a two-week class, and you have to pass a relatively easy exam. And um, it's, it's obviously a position of a lot of responsibility. We consider ourselves professionals and have worked many, many years to hone our expertise, but it's hard for somebody outside of the business to be able to identify uh, maybe who would be a great person to represent them in the sale of their house. Um, and I also feel that um, because so many of the realtors really aren't offering a lot, I think uh, a lot of consumers feel that um, all realtors kind of do the same thing. They're all kind of, they're all equivalent. And I think the purpose of this is to give, arm you with some questions and an approach to interviewing uh, a potential realtor to, uh, to manage the sale of your house so that you can help differentiate uh, ones that may be having the experience and knowledge that will be good for you versus somebody who maybe isn't qualified or somebody you're not going to want to work with. So that's kind of the background. So um, like, so obviously you're going to really want more than five questions, but we kind of generalize them into some, some categories. And uh, importantly, you want to come right out and ask somebody, how are you qualified to sell my home? So if we can go back one slide, Sue, sure. didn't, get, didn't get past that first question. Sorry um, so, uh, Clearly, how long somebody's been in business? Um, how um, do they specialize in your area? For instance, here on Sanibel, we have uh, uh, agents that are working off island agents that do primarily business at Fort Myers and elsewhere that will take on listings on Sanibel. And not only do they not know the specifics of our marketplace, they aren't even members of the local MLS. So the local agents don't even necessarily see the listings when they go and look into their own, the, the agent's MLS system to find listings. So that's a really um, significant issue. You wanna make sure that the people that you're hiring uh, are specialized in your area. Um, you wanna know how many homes they've sold uh, and in your area, how many homes they've sold. When you're hiring a real estate professional, if the transaction, if, if the transaction goes smoothly, that's great. But a lot of times transactions get a little bumpy that there's problems either in the early negotiating or further down the road. Um, and an experienced agent, somebody who's handled a lot of transactions is gonna be in a much better position to help you, help you negotiate for your house and to deal with issues as they come up to make sure that the transaction uh, comes to closure. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, understanding that they've done a lot of business, the more transactions they've done, the better. Um, you want to understand a little bit about their, their sales statistics. Um, so not only do you want to know like how many homes they've sold, but you also want to know what's their sale to list price ratio. In other words, 
how close are the list prices that they're putting on their homes to the actual transactions of the houses? So you want that to be fairly close. Um, you don't want to see there's a big difference between what the agent listed the house is at and what they sold for. Um, how, what's the average days on market for the homes that that agent lists compared to market averages for that area? Um, what designations does the real estate uh, agent hold? So Susan, you have uh, uh, some professional designations. I so, do. So what, so, are, what are some of the professional designations that, uh, that uh, a consumer might want to look for? You know, the GRI designation is probably a, a gold seal designation, it's something that um, took me a good year to fulfill. It's, um, it's three different GRI courses. And what does that GRI says, stand for? And what does that exactly mean? Oh my gosh, I, I have to look in my, in my booklet. Um, okay. Essentially, it's a higher level of learning. You you really drill down into um, into your profession and understand more details on how to deal with present day applications. So um, liken it to a master's degree versus an associate's degree, sort of? Yeah, for a real estate profession, yes, definitely. Yeah. Um, a lot of the things that I learned when I became a broker, I had already known some of that from the GRI designation I had gotten before I got my brokerage license. Mm -hmm. And so, even like our local association has designations regarding uh, understanding the local marketplace. So um, yeah, there's the Captiva Sanibel um, experts designation, which talks about nonprofits on the island and talks about um, island specific items like uh, SCCF and the work they do and how uh, the city of Sanibel operates its planning department, things like that. Gotcha. Um, Okay, so, um, so you know, not only so you want to look at their track record. You want to see that they've been busy. You want to see that they that they invest in education for themselves, um, and you want to see that their statistics are fair, are good. You don't want uh, somebody that's um, coming out with really long uh, days on market compared to the market averages. That would be a warning sign. All right. So, next question you might want to ask. Um, and I think this is really critical, is how will you reach potential buyers for my home? So every agent has the ability to put in uh, homes into the MLS, um, which gets syndicated to all the different websites. It'll get onto Zillow. They'll put a sign in your yard. Uh, a lot of agents will have a, a ad they might put in the paper with a little square with your house picture on it. Um, there's a variety, those are pretty standard stuff and that, um, it's okay. That's a good, those are all good things to get out there, but there's a lot, uh, beyond that. That's really important. Um, do they have, you want to see whether that agent has a written 30, 60, 90 day marketing plan for your home. Um, and they should be able to show that to you on the spot when you're interviewing them. Um, you want to know, do they have a database of potential buyers? Um, and if they have a database of potential buyers, how big is it and how active is it? Uh, do you, do they, what kind of social media presence do they have? Do they advertise on social media? Do they advertise on the internet other, you know, through Google ads or anything of that nature? Um, are they, uh, do they have their own website? Does that website show up when, when you do a Google search? Um, do they have an active real estate blog with followers? Uh, you know, those are all ways that that agent is going to be engaging with potential buyers and how are they going to put your home in front of those potential buyers? So those are, those are important things to understand. Not only that are they going to get professional, I would certainly hope you get professional photos and a lot of other things, but do they have an audience that they can put in front of and will they put it, will they present it well to that audience? And to understand whether your real estate agent is really a marketer, um, has a marketing mindset, you can ask some key questions that kind of help you gauge that. Like, 
uh, you can ask them, what do they think the selling features of your home are? Um, who do you think the buyer for my home will be? Uh, looking at my home, what impediments do you see to its selling? What can we do to make it sell more quickly and for more money? So you can ask questions like that to gauge, um, not just to get the answer, but to, just to see the mindset of the real estate agent that you're talking to. All right, so question number three. What will you be doing during the home selling process? So what is that agent? So they've gone and they've marketed the house. Um, what is the process of selling your house or trying to get it sold look like when you work with this agent? And it can vary quite a bit based upon who, you're, who you've um, hired to do this. Um, so for instance, are they gonna be doing open houses? Do you want open houses? How do you, you know, how do you, you know, what do you want to happen during an open house? During this COVID time, um, you know, I don't know if we really would want open houses in our house, you know, going on, but you wanna understand what, what the expectation is from you and, and from the agent. Um, when it comes to showings, are they going to prepare the house for showings? Are they going to get there early and turn on all the lights? Are they going to make sure that everything is pr prepared for showings if you're not there yourself? Um, uh, some agents like to attend the showings, even if it's uh, another agent showing the property. And that might sound like a great idea on the surface, but there's problems with that as well, because that means that showings can only happen when your agent is available. And if you have a successful agent that you've hired to show your property, they're going to be busy a lot of times. So it's going to make it harder for other agents to show the property. Uh, we see that in our own marketplace. So there's a few agents that advertise and sell as a feature that um, they'll accompany every showing that happens at the house. But the net result of that is less showings happen. And it's our belief that more showings are better. Uh, the more people that get into your house, the more people that see it, the better off you are. The, more likely you are to sell it quickly and for the price that you want to sell it for. Um, and then another important thing to understand is, do they work with buyers? So is your agent that you're hiring somebody that just brings on listings um, and um, markets those listings, or do they work with buyers as well? And the reason why you might want to want to know this is because um, a lot of agents that promote themselves and you'll see uh, on, on billboards and have a high profile, they're primarily listing agents, which means they bring on a listing. They're very good at selling homeowners on, um, on listing with them, but they don't actively sell your house. They're not the ones bringing the buyers to your house. They're going to rely um, on other agents Hold on a second, I lost my camera. They're gonna rely on other agents to, uh, to come and show your house. And you, is that, are you okay with that? Is that what you want in an agent? Um, so. <clears throat> Jim, do you mind elaborating on that just a little bit? I, I got a little bit lost there. Okay, thank you for, for asking that question. So um, when, Listing, listing homes, bringing homes to market and marketing those homes um, and marketing your services to potential sellers is a, almost a completely different business model than marketing yourself to potential buyers. Um, they, they're looking for different features. Uh, in, they're looking for different skills sometimes with their agent. Um, and some agents specialize in either being a buyer's agent or a seller's agent. And that's really where they focus their energy. And um, from our perspective, uh, we work hard at doing both jobs well um, because we feel it is important that we're good at doing both jobs. If we simply focused on bringing on listings, then... Um, I feel like we'd be doing a disservice to the homeowners we're representing because we're not working on actually finding the buyers to go into those homes. So we'll see in every market, there'll be agents that 
often are the ones that are the big, the ones that you see on TV or, uh, or the ones that are most visible to you. It's because they're spending their advertising dollars and their marketing effort on promoting themselves and their ability to sell homes. And they're relying really on other agents to bring the buyers into the homes. They're not spending their effort in finding buyers and bringing them in and showing your property. Gotcha. Okay. Does that, does that make sense? Yes. Thank you. Okay. So, um, you, you know, it's our position that you want to find an agent that's going to actively bring in buyers themselves into the property. It also, <laughs> if, if they're not actively working with buyers every day, all day, um, or a good part of their time, um, they're a little out of touch with what people want and what's valuable. So I think that um, having that perspective is also really important. So you- well, and I- I think there's an infrastructure issue as well that you have to keep in mind. You know, if you're working with, if you're going to interview an agent who does a handful of transactions a year and uh, some are with buyers and some are with sellers, you want to have a good understanding of what their infrastructure is within their organization. So, for example, if you're You've got Sally coming in to talk with you and she's a one man show and she shows people half a week and she lists properties the other half of the week. You want to make sure she has an assistant and you want to make sure that you've got a direct contact with that assistant so that if there's a showing on Tuesday and Sally's out with buyers, you want to make sure that that assistant is getting you the feedback you need to know so that you're ready for the Wednesday show. Okay. So if uh, one of the rooms felt warm, for example, you want to know that so that you can make sure airflow is good in that room before the Wednesday showing. And you need Sally to have an assistant to make right. sure that, that the communication is there. So I think that um, understanding who is supporting your agent is going to be hugely important. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Like that. And that's, that's actually our next point. Um, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> that's all right. <laughs> it's part of the next point. How will you be communicating with me? Um, probably the number one complaint uh, consumers have with their agent is uh, poor communication or lack of communication. And it's not because agents uh, don't want to communicate. It's, because they're so, it's usually because they're so busy doing so many things that it's hard for them to stay on top of uh, when they last communicated with you and remembering that, oh, wow, I haven't had that conversation with Sally for a while. Um, and so uh, you, w- you want to understand what, you know, a couple things about their communication. One is how will they be communicating with you? Are they going to be se- having you a weekly call? Are they going to be sending you email updates? Um, you know, how will you be notified of showings, all that kind of stuff. But you also want to know, like uh, Susan just said, you want to know if they're part of a team. So an individual agent operating by themselves has a lot of things going on. um, And it's very difficult for them to be good at all those things. And usually communication is what drops off uh, uh, as one of the casualties of trying to do everything yourself. Um, So you want to have a team that has an infrastructure and and processes in place that are standardized so that you know that the communication is going to happen. Um, so it could be just simply an assistant that's in charge of that. Or like in our case, we have a larger team in the sense that we have uh, people with very specialized roles. Uh, Tiffany, who's on this call as well, uh, focuses on marketing our new properties. I mean, she spends every listing we bring on, she does a lot of work to make sure that the best pictures are shown and it's described properly. And, all the different platforms that we put listings on um, show the property in the best possible light. That's a lot of work. Sure. Um, the, uh, but we also have somebody that helps with the contract to close process. So once the property goes under contract, there's a lot of steps that have to be reviewed and I's to dot and P's to cross and uh, deadlines to make sure that we don't miss. And so we have a person uh, on our team that works exclusively for us uh, that that's all they do is to make sure that that um, the process goes smoothly and they're they're communicating with the clients all the time. And so between the two of them, 
um, we have a, a weekly email update that we send out to the sellers. And then Susan communicates via phone to the sellers periodically um, to discuss what, what's going on. But you want to make sure that you understand and do they have a do they have a process in place? Is it, if, are they willing to make a commitment to you uh, as to how frequently and how they're going to communicate? Okay. All right. And then the last question, which really probably shouldn't come up unless you're really to the point where you're comfortable with the person, is what will it cost to sell my home? And um, there's a couple components to this. And the first is, of course, the fees that the agent charges or commission. Um, and you want to make sure that you understand what their commission is. Uh, not every agent charges the same commission. Um, you want to know if they're negotiable at all. Um, and what does it mean if they change their commission? Um, sometimes agents will change their commission, and, but they might change their service level. Uh, I know of other agents that will reduce commission, but they'll uh, have the homeowner uh, take on more costs on the listing. Um, the other uh, point about commission is that like in any industry, uh, the people that are successful and very good can charge a little bit more and should charge a little bit more than somebody that's inexperienced and isn't bringing that much to the table. Uh, if you're hiring a team that's got a... a they do an aggressive advertising, they pay advertising, they get the word out, they bring in high quality, expensive professional photographers. Um, they're more likely to get you a better price for your home based upon their endeavors um, versus somebody that's just gonna put it in an MLS and put a sign in the, in the yard. Um, that person who's doing very little, they may be willing to take a lower commission because honestly, they're not doing much work. Um, so that's something to understand and be comfortable with. The other thing to remember is that the commission that you pay as a seller is split between the agent that's listing the home and the agent that brings the buyer to the house, uh, that brings the buyer to your transaction. Sometimes it's the same person. Um, we like it to be. We work very hard at bringing the buyer to our listings, but most of the time, statistically, it's about 80% of the time, uh, a cooperating agent brings the buyer to the house uh, that, for the transaction. And uh, so that, ha that commission that you're offering the for your listing is split between the buyer and the seller. And it is advertised in the MLS to the buyer's agents. So the buyer's agents, when they're looking at the listings and deciding which homes to show their potential buyers, they see what the commission that's being offered to them is. So um, these are salespeople. They're working to make money. And you know clearly, if they're looking at a commission rate that's lower on one house and higher on a similar house, I mean, are they gonna be more likely to show the house that's gonna pay them more money? Gotcha, that makes you sense. You know, that's, that's the case. So you wanna think about that. And then the last thing about uh, commission um, is that going back to the more experienced agents, um, uh, small differences in commission are easily er erased by uh, the value that agent can bring at the negotiating table. So if you're bringing in an experienced agent that knows how to negotiate, knows how to deal with problems, knows how to resolve things in a way that makes your home sell, that your deal doesn't fall apart, that you get the best possible price in the negotiation and knows how to, how to, how to stand firm in those negotiations and still get your house sold, um, that, an agent like that earns earns their commission and you're better off and will walk away from that transaction oftentimes with a lot more money in your pocket, even though you're paying a higher commission because that agent knew how to market and how to position and how to negotiate your house. Um, so, all right. So I'm going to, um, I want to mention just one little thing and that is when you're talking about um, your cost to sell your home, there are other closing costs that you should ask your agent to explain to you. Um, each county in Florida, and I'm sure other municipalities throughout the US have special fees and taxes that they may charge. So ask your agent what those are ahead of time. 
um, so that when you do ultimately receive an offer, you have a general idea of what your costs are going to be. As a seller, there so there could be additional fees attached that I would need to know about? Yes. So, for example, in Lee County, Florida, the seller pays for the buyer's title and that can be for, you know, an $800,000 home, that can be about $4,000, $4,500. Right. So that's something you just want to have in the back of your mind as well. And then there are taxes on the sale that you will most likely have to pay. So check with the agents um, and ask them what other expenses you have to count, okay. account for. Okay. Okay, so um, just before we wrap up, I think there's a couple couple things that you just need to ask yourself when you're working with an agent and you've and you've been discussing with them. So, um, Susan, sorry, did I? Uh... So we kind of talked about this. Does paying a lower commission e equal more money from the sale? Um, and I think uh, my point a moment ago is not necessarily. Um, you can hire somebody, um, somebody's willing to take a lower commission, uh, maybe doing so because they have less business and they're more desperate and they're not going to be in the best position to negotiate strongly for you on the sale of your home. Um, they could also be in the business of selling, doing a lot of transactions. We know um, if there's different business models out there. So we know uh, there's an agent in our market that does a lot of transactions and is willing to charge slightly less commission, but you know, it's a little bit more of a assembly line type process versus personalized care and diligence from our perspective. So um, just know that, um, you know, sometimes you do get what you pay for with things. So just be, be aware, be aware with that. Okay, next. Um, and let me just add, and I'm sorry, may go through this, but um, we do share the commission typically 50-50 with whoever brings the buyer, just to keep in mind. Yeah. yeah, and that's not a universal truth though. That can vary based upon the agency. Correct. Yeah, yeah. That's, how we, that's how we do it. Mm -hmm. um, so here's a big red flag, because we see this all the time and it's very frustrating. Um, a question that you might, uh, some agents that don't have anything else to talk about or any other way to differentiate themselves will often try to win the listing by uh, promising a higher price. They'll go into, you'll ask the agents, well, well, how much do you think you can sell my house for? And, and then an agent comes in and gives you a number that's very like, wow, that would be great. I'd really like to sell it for that. That sounds, you know, and you start thinking about it and we all, we're all want to get the most money possible for our house. So it's very tempting to, um, to go with the agent that uh, uh, offers you, that says that they can sell it for the highest price. Um, and but that's not very meaningful because unless that agent is willing to buy it for that price themselves, um, the market determines the price of the home. Um, the agent doesn't. The agent can help identify what, what the market will bear and a good agent will have a great process of helping, you, helping determine the, uh, a realistic market price for the home. But um, it's very tempting as a consumer to go with an agent that feels like your house is worth more money. You might be disappointed with what some of the agents say, but what you want to make sure that you understand is how did the agent determine the suggested listing price? And you want to make sure that when you look at how they did it and the comps they use, are they really relevant comps? Or are they comparing you to homes that aren't necessarily relevant to you? Because the end result is if you go to market with too high of a price, the house is going to languish. It's going to sit on the market. It's not going to get a lot of activity. And then that agent's going to be coming to you and asking you for a price reduction, which they probably knew they were going to do when they listed your house. That they weren't that that was what the future was going to hold, um, either that or they may 
you know, some agents are just unrealistic and they don't really know the market. But many agents um, will rely on trying to trick consumers by saying, giving a really high price, they get the listing agreement, and then they work on getting the price lowered over time. Meanwhile, your house languishes, you don't sell the property, and um, the market will start to notice that your house is sitting there and didn't sell. And eventually, people will begin to say, what's wrong with that house if it sits for too long? Mm -hmm. We okay. hear that all the time. And the answer oftentimes is, well, they came to market with the price was too high. You know, it was, it was priced too high. Now, a year later, they've got it down to where the market will, you know, where it's close to market. It's m more correctly priced because they've reduced it. But the, but the consumers are asking, well, it's been on the market for a year. Why didn't it sell? So it creates problems. So that's a, that's a big red flag if you, um, if you don't feel like the agent uh, uh, did a good job determining uh, what the suggested list price is. Okay, okay. Ideally, you'll go to some open houses in your neighborhood uh -huh. and get a feel for how those homes compare to your that will give you a really good idea. Okay, which I can do kind of where your value is. Or popping up. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. And you know, it's um, many real estate agents now, if they're not holding an open house with the doors open, they are doing virtual open houses and they have video tours. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah, and so that's... <clears throat> So taking in your, all of that information, those types of questions and talking with that person, the bottom line is, what's your gut feeling? Um, you know, there's a lot to be said for, you know, your, your take, your, your instincts, because uh, your brain is picking up more on what somebody's saying than maybe you're consciously aware of sometimes. I don't know how it works, but I do know that when I go against my gut feeling more times than not, it was, it's a mistake. <laughs> sure. So, um, so ask yourself, what's your gut feeling? What do you feel about those different people that have come in to talk about selling your home and, and, uh, give that some, some, uh, some credence. And, All right? uh, listen, get a sense if they're listening to your concerns. Okay. Um, you definitely want to understand that they, because when it comes to negotiations, you want to be heard. You don't want them to not consider what your thoughts are. Sure. But I know Ralph will help me with that one. <laughs> oh, he will. For sure. Yep. Um, so, McCallionRealty.com is a site that we have um, that has some seller resources on it. We got Jim, as you know, does a lot of our development and he's, he and Tiffany are building this out to be a good selling resource for all of our clients, whether they be near or far. Um, mm -hmm. So feel free to pop in. You might get some good tidbits of information as you're going through this process in Orlando. Um, I had one question that was sent to me earlier. What if my sister-in-law is an agent, but she only sells one or two homes per year? <laughs> Would you like to answer that or shall I? <laughs> okay, I'll answer it. Well, you know, it's, it can be tough when your sister-in-law is the agent and she sells one or two properties per year. Um, what I would probably recommend is that you work with an agent that has a little bit more experience with negotiating and marketing the home, but ask that agent if they'd be willing to provide a 25% referral fee for your sister-in-law. That way um, you're getting a little bit more professionalism. You're dealing with someone who's not family. Your home's being marketed the way you expect it to be. You can hold someone accountable and your sister-in-law gets the benefit of a referral fee. So that's how I would answer that question. Um, Brandy, do you have any other questions that have come to mind? Along that line, and I apologize, I don't know why I can't get my chat typing thing to work. So whoever else is out there, I beg your, 
please have patience with me for listening. Um, so Ralph and I do have several um, friends and acquaintances in this neighborhood who are realtors. So including the one of the ones who sold, who represented us as the buyer for the home that we're in currently. Mm -hmm. um, I don't, I'm not necessarily confident he did the best job of that based on things that I've experienced being in the home. Uh, and, and again, this may just be an offline question. I, I'm think, is it rude to vet all of the people I know, just like you've given me the layout, the five questions like, okay, I'm going to be upfront and honest with you. I'm, I know a lot of people here. I've looked at who's selling the most homes and, and what are your methods? Like the, what, what's your 30, 60, 90 day business plan? Is that rude to ask them or do I have not to feel an all. obligation to go? Not at all, because they need to understand that you're going to hold them to a very professional bar. And I would make a grid for yourself, a, a spreadsheet, if you will, with all the questions and all the different agents you're meeting with. Make sure you're asking each one of them the same question. Same. Okay. And um, they need to know from the very beginning that your home sale is a business for you and having it dealt with um, in a professional man manner is of utmost importance. That's so awesome. you want to make sure the marketing is is perfect and spot on. You want to make sure the communication is transparent. Um, and you need to have confidence that this person is going to negotiate to your benefit. Okay. Yeah. And, and I'll, I'll tag on to that. Um, yeah, it's a it's a big dis you know, a good realtor can make a big difference in your in your home transaction. Like I said, especially especially if there's a hiccup or a bump that happens in the negotiation process or when it's under contract, it, it, it's a big deal. Um, and if there is, um, so my, my really instant answer to your question is absolutely, it is not rude. This is your house. This is your money. This is your, you know, this is your wealth that you have to look out for. No one else is going to look out for it except for yourself. So you need to you need to be there. And if there is an agent that takes offense by the approach that you take, mm -hmm. then that's that is a really good indicator that they were not the professional that you needed to sell your house. That'd be a red flag, right? Yeah, it'd be a yeah. red flag to me because because the, if they're taking it personal, then that means this business is personal to them, and they're not looking at it at they're not looking at themselves as being a professional service provider. And we know, um, with all, we, have, we have friends, we live in an island that has over 300 real estate agents and, and for population, the very small population, everybody knows multiple real estate agents. Everybody we know, every friend we have that lives here knows multiple real estate agents. And I fully expect any one of them to vet who they think is the best match for selling their house. And we, you just have to go with it. They can only choose one. And you just have to accept the fact that sometimes they're not going to choose you. And as a professional, you just roll with that. And that's, and you say, okay, well, I'm doing, they're doing something that my friend liked better, you know, better than what I'm doing. And let me find out what that is so I can get better myself. I mean, that's, that's how we see that. So, um, I wouldn't hesitate. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely interview people. 